Uh, today, I believe, is the 8th of August, 2015. It's uh, The session is being recorded. It's 11.20 a.m. Uh, New York time here, Eastern Standard Time. This is Clueless 8, Frank. And um, we are holding our uh, beginners uh, coaching session to, for, uh, uh, for all four of you. Uh, full disclosure, this is purely for financial education and not for any solicitation or advice. It's clear on that. So first of all, a very warm welcome. And, uh, and, 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 and the fact that you guys have taken time uh, at this time, you know, on, on, on a Sunday, on a Saturday morning to do this um, uh, just shows that you have uh, some commitment in understanding some of the things that I do. And I think it's going to make your life a lot easier in understanding the slew of uh, charts and uh, comments and stuff that I, uh, that, that I post. And I believe that you would be, you'll be in a position to uh, uh, read them more effectively. I have uh, two goals on this first session, uh, like I've always told people. One is to make sure you, you, you all can maximize uh, the, the, the content that I'm producing uh, to your benefit. And number two, make my life a little bit easier. Uh, to, and by that, what I mean is uh, it's, it's, it's a symbiotic uh, uh, relationship in the sense that I, will, I do not have to go ahead and, uh, and explain uh, all these things in, a, in, in the middle of a, a busy trading day uh, and, uh, and, 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 and go into the, you know, go into the, the, the larger explanation of, uh, of uh, uh, chart reading. So that brings me to my second point. The initial lesson is to how to, under, how to understand and read my charts. I will go into a little bit about the methodology and the thought process that goes behind it. We're going to look at uh, some, of the, uh, uh, some of the indicators and stuff that I use uh, consistently and also look at the charts that have been posted uh, already uh, when we're going to, we're going to uh, take a good look at them and, um, and uh, have you guys review them a little bit. So that's 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 the second goal. All right. So let's kick off. I uh, just want to uh, mention to you guys that these are all recorded sessions, and at some point, uh, it does take a little, uh, quite a bit of time to uh, put these out. Uh, they will be available um, uh, for. Uh, and my tech admin has asked me to mention this to everyone. They will be available to members. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be a small cost to it or not. That's his. That's his call uh, because it takes quite a bit of time to basically edit all this and put it out there. But they will be available to you, so you can go back and review um, and do what you need to do with it. So it's 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 a fantastic tool. So first and foremost, uh, you guys can all see the screen, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay, good. I will um, I will go ahead and I will leave questions. Uh, stop me uh, if I'm going too fast, but uh, I am unscripted. My uh, give you a little idea about my service. I'm not a very uh, I'm my my it, for a better choice of words. My service is very unorthodox in the sense that there is a abundance of market and economic. Um, content that is being produced and of course the goal is to make money through the trading charts um, putting all three of these things together is not a easy feat because it was never the service was never designed to, um, to for uh, somebody who is brand new to the world of trading or to the world of investing um, but over time it's developed where we have where I, where we initiated these coaching sessions and we try to be as uh, explanatory as possible. So saying all that, it's extremely important, like I say all the time, that over a short period of time, get used to the different formats that I use. The main conduit for posting the trade alerts, as you all know, is the is the uh, Twitter feed. Um, that's so far for now um, as we're evolving. Um, is the best conduit for, for transmitting that information. We uh, also the end of the day reports and the video cast. Hi, somebody else's voice is coming in. Yeah. Okay, that's better. Um, it's just that the echo feedback is very loud on this side. So the the video cast and the end of the day reports, which I have slacked off a little bit, and I intend to get back on track on that, primarily because of my time commitments, are also very important because they cover uh, some very pertinent information. I used to do video casts every night, and I realized that people don't have the time or were just not 
hooked onto it on a daily basis. So I will do it at least two or three times a week um, so that it, whether it be the end of the day uh, uh, reports or whether it be the pre-market AM reports, important that you guys go through that. Um, the third is obviously the, the, the conversational part, which is the interaction with members uh, on the chat room. The chat room is not designed to specifically uh, 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 post the trade alerts and all that stuff, but we do have some terrific people. As Derek knows, you know, my friend uh, uh, Rich Hager is, uh, is a great guy. He has a lot of alternative stuff that he does. I've given him a specific room for that, and uh, and he is uh, uh, and you know he's uh, uh, he's he's active in that. And of course, it's up to him when when he comes in and when he does that. Uh, the overall chat rooms are helpful in the sense that a lot of my quick thought process and stuff are are put out there. Um, but um, I try to be as engaged as possible. But believe me when I tell you that it becomes absolutely impossible at times, especially with the volatility uh, in the market to um, uh, to uh, respond to everything at that time because everything is just in a state of flux uh, during the day. So just want to make clear on that. Okay, uh, we will be introducing um, other features and uh, those things, you know, we're constantly evolving and uh, there's a lot more to come. Just want to pass it on to you. So saying all that, welcome. First things that I start with is the basic chart pattern that, I uh, walk people through so they under, they they start to see um, uh, that they, they, they have a basic understanding of the technical patterns. Before I go any further, let me. I, I always ask these uh, 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 quick questions. So I'll start off with Bob. From a from a, uh, the number of years and overall that you've been involved in the U.S. financial markets, whether it be investing or trading, uh, how many years would you say? Like how long have you known Mr. Market here in the U.S.? Uh, 15 to 20. Perfect. And from a standpoint, on a scale of one to five, one being the least, you know, and and and, uh, and five being the most or, or the max, understanding the way markets work, where would you think you stand? Uh, probably four to five. Okay, like as in the fundamental basis for what markets do, what they do, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I, I have a finance background. I'm a, I was a, I mean, I am a financial advisor, so. Oh, okay, great, great. Are you still a financial advisor? Uh, no, but I have. Um, you have background in it, okay? Kind of, okay. Yeah, I, I have a background in it. That's, that's, that's great. That's what my degree is in. So. Very good. Where are you located, Bob? Uh, currently in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana area. Very good. Um, from a scale of one to five, when it comes to technical analysis and technic, you know, all the all the shenanigans with uh, technical patterns and stuff, where would you think that you stand with? Uh, Again, probably four to five. I I recognize a lot of the patterns. A lot of the things. Okay. All, all the all, all the stuff that we have on the screen. I'm, I'm okay. Comfortable very, with. Very good. And and from a risk level, when it comes to trading, um, on a scale of one to five, what would you consider your risk level to be? Uh, risk, five. Risk a uh, five. Okay, that's great. Well, you're gonna yeah. go. You're gonna go very far with uh with uh, what we do. Fantastic. Uh, same question to Craig. Uh, start off, how long have you been in the market or how long have you known uh, the U.S. stock markets? Uh, just a couple years, probably just a little over two years. Perfect. And uh, I have a, I have a, uh, a contrarian uh, way of thinking that the less you know the market, the better off you are going forward because a lot of things have changed, even though history repeats itself. But when it comes to the, uh, the, the, the market dynamics, things are quite different than what they were, you know, even two, three, five years ago. Um, second question is the same one that I asked, like from a technical uh, standpoint, how well do you understand the market from a scale of one to five? Uh, I'd say I'm probably like a one to two. Perfect. I so mean, you, you I don't know the basics, but you know, I'm yep. definitely still you know, playing. Well, I'm 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 still learning and adapting, so that's that's great. And uh, and uh, the, what was the third question that I asked from a from from a standpoint of uh, of uh, uh, risk? Um, where would you say you stand between one and five? Yeah, probably a one or two right there too, just because I still don't have. Okay. I don't, I don't have the trust. I, I would say, you know. Yeah, well, I believe me. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't trust the market either or a thing. But I do trust my abilities to somehow manage the stuff. So that's great. So move on to Derek. 
Derek, uh, yep. number of years that you've uh, you know been in the U.S. financial markets? So I, I've traded mostly Canadian because I am up in Canada, but the last, I'd say, two years I've been just focusing on the U.S. Okay, that's great. And uh, as in understanding the, 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 the technicals and all that stuff, uh, what, what do you think? Say, I'd say probably a two. Okay. And then from a risk standpoint, um, where do you think you stand? Certainly a five. Wow. Okay. That's great. Um, and then finally, uh, Jason. Yeah, I'm uh, from Boston. I'm yeah, Boston, I, Massachusetts. that I know. Um, yeah, we spoke. Uh, um, so I've been about two, two years following the markets. I took an options course halfway through that and started trading. Okay. During the worst time to, to trade possible, which was after that October rip. After yes. the Ebola scare, and I've been yes. stuck in the chop ever since. Yes, of course. That was a pivotal low in the market for now. And I, I a lot of my charts are drawn from that point on just to give a picture mm -hmm. of where the levels we can be, you know, going down or going up. Um, from a, um, a standpoint of uh, technical analysis and things like this, um, where would you think you, you stand? One to five. Four or five. I recognize all the chart patterns and I see things. Okay. Um, the next question will answer why I don't activate on them, but yes. <laughs> no, that that's fine. And chart patterns nowadays are far more dynamic and they change quite rapidly compared to what they were before. So that's not completely your fault. Um, and uh, and then finally, from a risk level, where do you think you stand? Right now, I'm probably at a two because, like I said, I've yep. been trading the chart and it's it's Perfect. really been tough. So yeah. I'm I'm willing to go up higher as you at, know, I at, learn. At, as needed, no problem. So this gives me a much better idea and you guys are a mixed bag with what you are. So let's go over the chart patterns very quickly and let me just warn everyone that I am not a traditional chartist. I have taken tradition, I mean, a technical analysis. I have sat beside some of the best minds uh, 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 in, in, in the business to see what they do in my years on Wall Street. Uh, I was not a trader. Um, I was uh, on the wealth management side. I started off as an analyst at Putnam Investments, and then I worked for two large firms on the street, and then one small firm, and then I branched out on my own. So, and then I did a year with a hedge fund uh, to see, you know, to, that I was called into in the sense that I knew the gentleman. He liked the way my my uh, my style. Uh, but then I realized that uh, they are too rigid in the way they look at things, and I decided to do my own. So I took the risk, and it worked out, and I'm grateful for everything that we that that we have. Um, now, uh, let's uh, let me get my little drawing tool here. So the first, pa uh, the first, and, and believe me, when it comes to when I, when, uh, the reason I said that I'm not a traditional chart is because I believe that uh, that a lot of the patterns and stuff that everyone's looking at, like they say, you know, a washed uh, kettle never boils. Everybody in the old days, um, these uh, the, the the technical patterns were far more uh, uh, predictable, uh, primarily because there were fewer people looking at them. You know, people were not. Uh, you know, nowadays you can you can take a crash, you go on YouTube and 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 make yourself a genius on on learning technical stuff. But so my point is that the more the players who enter the market uh, from a technical side and the advent, and this is the most important thing, and I've said this many many times, the advent of high frequency trading programs and algorithmic uh, programs in the market have truly uh, put a massive twist on uh, on uh, on the movements which might seem random but basically what happened over a period of two weeks three weeks a month even longer are now being compressed within hours days and if not weeks i would say hours and days to be honest with you therein lies the real cause for volatility aside from the other factors that you know that cause volatility so that's where my um strength comes in in trying to put a different twist to it. So um, so starting with the first pattern, which is ABC bullish and ABC bearish. Um, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, because some of you guys might know a little bit better. But the way I look at these ones, are these are more intermediate to longer term patterns. And, uh, and they don't always manifest themselves directly in the market uh, at the time from, from a trading standpoint. But then at the same time, um, I uh, I don't really draw them out that much. Sometimes when I want to show a broader picture, I do because for the average, for uh, the majority of the traders out there, uh, it is not something that you can effectively make money off uh, given the time frames that we're looking at. So I'm going to leave those two alone. Now, this site that I mentioned to you, Book Market, you might know this gentleman. He is a fantastic technician. Uh, he is on stock twits. Uh, uh, Suri Dadella is his name, and uh, and his site is just a goldmine of learning technical analysis. You can click on these things. Um, 
you can you can click on one second here let me get the bookmark bar out okay uh you can you can click on his uh sites uh not sh oh it's uh taking a sweet time and um and so you can play the videos you can do all kinds of stuff and uh he's you know if, if you want to learn more head and shoulders we all know about it we think it's very easy to read they're not because the reality is because of the volatility factors involved in the market they're never as clean as they look however on the overall indices we do we do see multiple head and shoulders over a compressed period of time so head and shoulders being uh, bearish as we know and inverse head and shoulders play we play that all the time these things are um are there and uh and again it, they manifest themselves all the time over short periods of time over longer periods of time and the trick is and i don't know what the formula for that trick is but uh, the, the 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 skill is to try to uh analyze them uh to the best uh of uh to your benefit so number one gartley bullish gartley bearish fantastic patterns want to know more about them i'm not going to get into it because that'll take an hour long session um is right there so you can click on it go through it and you can for the for the average trader out there who's looking at things on a shorter term basis and i'm not talking five minutes two minutes i'm talking even weeks these are not necessarily you know that easy to read they are more wave patterns uh and um and basically when you um click on them one second you can clearly see here that they're measured in all kinds of waves i do study waves but i am not a wave specialist period uh i rely on others who know far better in understanding what type of you know uh El uh, elliot waves or all these different waves that are you know that manifest themselves in the market so there you go let me go back dragon bullish dragon bearish absolutely critical to understand i know they're easy to read when you're looking at this stuff and you guys are um uh quite a few steps ahead than than, than somebody who's uh, who has no idea what these patterns are but simply polish i mean simply put it's a w it's a double bottom you know little consolidation handle here which is the same thing as a bull flag um which throws a lot of people away uh and kick them out of the game and with the volatility in this uh, programs in play these type of consolidation patterns can be violent especially in the fast moving high momentum stocks that we know about the netflixes the price lines um the apple uh the you name it um uh, the, the the googles and uh and obviously these are constantly in play in the market nothing much to report other than say it's a downtrend line then rejection creates double bottom moves higher creates a consolidation triangle i'm sorry a consolidation channel or a bull flag um which sometime breaks up or sometime breaks down and uh, and then has all kinds of false signals along the way but can be drawn and i have repeatedly shown over over the years and since specifically since my service started we started the service last april uh that they have worked very well to our um you know to our benefit dragon bearish is um another just the opposite of this and uh again you know you have uh, you have a uh, uh you have a large this is basically a continuation of a uh of a uh, falling wedge, uh, the way I look at it. Uh, one second here, let me get the drawing tool. So it could be a large falling wedge, which basically breaks out. Just the way here, I'm gonna draw that. Falling wedges break out for, you know, the, the, the behavioral reason behind it is very simple. You get some very dogmatic shorts, you start to enter the short uh, positions all the way at the lows. You get, you get uh, a complete loss of uh, faith and hope uh, in the stock as it's as it's as it's doing that uh so the so the bulls give in and then you create a massive uh, uh vortex or internal pressure also known as a uh also known as a coil spring and uh, and bang it breaks out you get new buyers entering and all kinds of goods you know all kinds of powerful moves happen um and the shorts get squeezed um so it's basically a a very powerful short squeeze which sucks in new buyers um and then you know they do what they do they get up to these tops here most investors most traders don't follow these things uh, as much and they don't have faith in it they wait around they wait around for some massive confirmation by the time they get in they got a little bit of a of a move up and then it does you know then it does what it does it comes down test up trend line 
um, goes up, comes down, and then creates, starts the cycle again, creates what is known as a bear flag. Now, the bear flag is the same thing, just the opposite. It is a, it, it, it's a, you, you're, you're, you start to see a massive short covering. Um, I have traded bear flags. They are tricky, but they can be very, very profitable. You have to keep your trades very tight when you're starting to see them because we don't know whether the bear flag is going to uh, 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 resolve itself to the upside or whether or not it'll resolve itself to the downside. Bear flags are known to be, that's why they're called bear flags, that once the dead cat bounce is over, that it will resolve itself and the primary trend of the dragon bearish pattern, which is lower, will continue. So volatility patterns, very important. Double bottom, double top, nothing needs to be said. Same same things, I wish they all looked this clean. You know, They never do. These two are the ones which play havoc with investors and traders mind these are the i call the, uh, these are known as you know the market structure lows uh and he calls he explains them in detail i'm talking about suri notes so click on them and look at the videos um these are the ones that drive traders out of their minds this is where i reside as a um uh, as a uh uh as a trader, in the sense that I try to read all kinds of different uh, 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 nuances within this external chart patterns, which I'm going to get into in a second. These are ex all external pictures of what's going on, obviously. Um, so, and and try to keep people in the trade and try to make money. It's very difficult, and because emotional factor comes into play, and as we all know. That the old cliche that 90% of trading is mental, it is mental, no question about it. And the fact remains that the volatility and the algo HFT programs don't make it any easier. And that therein lies the answer from you know what Jason said. And why don't you act on it? Why don't I act on it? Sometimes I do act on it, but why do I sometimes sell early or this and that? Is purely because the intensity of the of the chop or the volatility excuse. Um, any traditional uh, sort of movement or trajectory that we might think that trade will follow. My track record has been that overall, especially on the big macro trades where I pick up things at deep inflection levels, point of maximum fear, point of maximum pain, whatever you call it, I am generally 24 to 48 hours early. This has been repeated over and over again. Despite all that, I don't even follow through 100% of my of my moves. I like taking. I never go in uh, from my methodology, and everyone has their own style. I'll never go in 100% into the trade, and therein lies the word scaling in. And we'll go over that some of the terms. That I'll buy a bunch here. As I see that acceleration move start, I will add. I will add more. I will probably, you know, really uh, put my full position at this level, and then I will possibly get out before it gets to with these levels. So I'll miss this part, and I'll, you know, uh, that's fine. But that's generally been my track record overall. Same thing applies with the market structure, which is a convoluted inverse head and shoulder, and uh, and the chop, and you can clearly see that triangles, just exactly what it is. You know, you start to see a a, 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 a a very tight trading range, and either it breaks up or it breaks down. So it can be both ways. These have been huge money makers for me, which are falling wedges and rising wedges. Rising wedges generally trend down. It doesn't mean it's going to completely uh, 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 com uh, completely uh, give back and 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? Retrace uh, the whole move. But um, just like anything else, you see a tightening of the of the uh, of of the triangle. I believe it's also called a diagonal, and um, it's done very well for me. Falling wedges have done very well for me, and uh, and these patterns, you know, on the surface, that's what they look like. Bull flags, just just the way I explained, on a strong high momentum uh, uh, play where the where the trend is on the upside, you will always you will always get consolidation channels profit taking that's it that's what it is somebody getting in down here off this uh breakout let's say or bought down here anticipating the breakout which i do a lot um and uh and and i'm going to be taking some you know nice profits 
So the same thing applies here on the short side, if you want to look at it that way, and that's why this is called a dead cat bounce or a coil spring or a bear flag. Shorts are covering, and you're seeing that you know intermediate you know short-term bounce. Channels, we're fully aware of what they are. We are moving in a very wide channel in the market. We're going to look at that today. And, uh, and they are obviously never as clean as they look, and they're extremely choppy, but there are ways to read it. Now, saying all that, I know, you know, this is kindergarten stuff for some of you, but it's very important. I'd like to remind myself is looking at charts itself really doesn't make the money. And that's my opinion. Why? Because charts are very interchangeable and they are rapidly changing direction. And even though the patterns might seem great looking back in hindsight, while you're in the middle of a trade and the more money you have in that trade or investment, the more nervous you're going to be. And the volatility doesn't help. And that's why some of the best hedge fund guys out there, I remember last year I posted a bunch of articles. They wrapped. They said, we can't trade this market. And the ones who stayed in the game, they flourished. There's a significant amount of hedge funds within the past couple of years who have folded. And I'm talking big guys. Not folded the whole fund, but they say, listen, Market's too unpredictable, can't do that. We're too many macro factors which are non-correlated and all that stuff. Bottom line is the charts itself, if they told the whole story, we wouldn't have to, you know, it'll be a life would be a very simple place, you know. I'd be cleaning out, you know, six figures every day. It doesn't work like that. So the charts, the way I look at it, are the external picture of what's going on. The real work comes in on reading the internals. And those internals. Um, are simply all the different, whether it be the MACDs, whether it be the vortex indicators, whether it be the stochastics, which are the simplest ones to read, uh, whether it be, you know, reading the basic RSIs, so many are there, right? Hundreds of them are out there. I've never claimed that I'll never claim, guys, that I have a system. I don't have a system. I have a method of dealing with the madness. And uh, years of experience have taught me um, uh, that patterns reveal themselves in a symmetrical form and that is one of my strongest uh, um, uh, suits is I am a pretty damn good I'll go ahead to head with anyone on pattern symmetry and reading all the you know different patterns as as they're developing and before they're developing and that's really that's you know, as, 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 as time goes on you guys will start to see that that I do have a you know a very high track record on on, on doing that. There's many different ways to look at the patterns, but that's it. So the internal reading is really the hard part because just because something's oversold doesn't mean it's going to bounce. And just because something's overbought, it can stay overbought longer than, you know, or uh, some, a short can stay solvent or they can stay oversold longer than, you know, a long can stay solvent. So in other words, that's just, you know, that's just one simple way of, of, you know, it's never that simple. So the internals and stuff, which I'm going to cover briefly, and I'm going to cover more in the previous uh, following sessions, is really um, what I, 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 I look at the ones that have worked for me. One of the things that I like to do is because I'm not a deep technical wonk, I am not, you know, I, I, uh, I don't have, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't have like a one plus one equal two system. If this happens, this will exactly happen. But some of the things that have worked for me and have repeatedly worked for me, I, you know, my job is to, you know, in the service is to share it with other people and let them fine tune it to their benefit. So just they want to be clear about that. So the internals, reading the internals and reading it with a, remember, there's a lot of cognitive bias in technical uh, charting, which I think all of you will agree with. You can look at the same picture and look at a very bearish view, or you can look at it from a bullish view, or you can, you know, or in between. Nobody in the business is neutral about the way they look at the markets. Tactical, yes. Neutral, no. Everyone has a bias. Everyone, either they're a complete Fed hater, or they're, you know, just this is no way the stock can get there. The PE, you know, I'm, I've thrown all that garbage out a long time ago because I've worked within the money management business and I've seen how the how some of the best minds operate. And trust me, regardless of what they see in the media, no one's, you know, no one's that much of a fundamentalist when it comes to the market. So fundamentals are important. There's no question about it. But it, they are not. If fundamentals were that easy to read, then the markets would do, uh, you know. 
just it'll be just just so easy um but they're not because so many emotions are involved and the cognitive bias of a trader or an investor is equally important so that summarizes that part now let's move on to reading the basics of my charts and how i draw them um i like to keep some things uh, um standard so one of the first things that uh, when you look at one of my charts and uh, you guys uh, see is uh, I like especially on the in indices and stuff one second especially on the indices and stuff I look at um, I uh, uh, draw the trading bands so the green band would be upper resistance lower bands would be the lower resistances or support zones um, trend lines this has actually multiple trend lines um, that I had actually uh, it, that you have seen in many of my charts especially on the Dow Jones so some people might say hey listen why are you doing that because it doesn't really fit in what I the way I look at it well my answer to that question is because it works for me um, and I have tested it not just tested it I've done it over the years um, and so I look at inflection points which I believe um, not how, not everyone's agree with me, which I believe were important inflection points, and I will draw um, trend lines, whether it be uptrend lines or downtrend lines from those levels uh, going forward. So, um, so you look at those. This chart, for example, the S&P 500 was drawn um, weeks ago, months ago actually, and this was that pivotal October low. We had the, you know, what I need to remind you, it was Ebola, it was the high yield uh, 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 collapse crisis uh, or alleged crisis, especially because of oil prices and, and, and a lot of junk bond uh, spreads, you know, really going crazy, um, especially on the shale and uh, smaller oil companies, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you, had, uh, you, you had a massive correction. Then came this massive one. Now, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of it, but I can assure you from a behavioral dynamic standpoint, you can pull up my video casts from that time. Uh, you can look at my charts from that time. I called this reversal bottom. I did not lump in and just like a hero, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to buy it here and I'm going to sell it there. I was amazed by the way the market moved. We traded along the way. We followed some basic, I mean, we followed the internals and we did very well. Um, as traders, you guys know, and oh, I forgot to ask. Uh, Bob, are you, uh, you you do both stocks and uh, options? Correct. Good, Craig. Yes, I do. Okay, Derek, you're doing just stock right now, correct? That's correct. Very good. And Jace? Oh, uh, Jace, I know. Jason is, uh, I know. Sorry, I call you Jace, man. One of my best buddies, you know, my neighbor actually. I call him Jace all the time. Jason. Um. So um. So it um. So good. So from an from an for an option standpoint, uh, I, I I I can tell you uh, that a, a basic uh, you know uh, whatever just picking a figure a ten thousand dollar you know set of calls or whatever on a series of things would have generated somewhere around two hundred thousand plus uh, if not one hundred fifty thousand dollar plus up here. Well, it's it's not like somebody actually did it, but if I do get a fall like that, um, I uh, certainly will leave some portion of it, which I didn't at that point. I trade along the way um, to 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 some you know now that now that we have a reference point I will certainly you know do that. However, that's the past. What the pattern that you're seeing and oh let me go through the charts here. So so you're looking so you uh, so I draw these buffer zones the support zones easy stuff. I put arrows. I sometimes gets really childish and I put arrows going this way and that way. It's simply to because we have a slew of different. Um, uh, the, the 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 experience in in in, in the type of uh, people that I have in the service, and uh, so obviously you know try to some, sometimes guide them a little bit. So the arrows speak for themselves. Um, I um those are the points of um what I consider to be um uh, reversal points, and and then where the sell points are if somebody's looking at it from a swing standpoint. Uh, then I have the I use the Bollingers <coughs> and acceleration bands very effectively and I and again nothing needs to be said you get to the lower end of the Bollinger you're going to get a reflex that that cat bounce if the primary trend has changed then obviously that's going to curve down and all you know all kinds of different things that will happen some of the things are just so simple people say man that's like 
it's almost so simple. It's stupid. I said, yeah, it made a lot of it made me a lot of money. And it's a fact because by stu- by studying just the Bollinger's and the, and the, and the acceleration bands, you actually can have a nice macro view of what where the market's heading, regardless of the violent swings back and forth. Has the primary trend changed? And of course, the moving averages, which I use the 50 and the 34, and as as uh, as uh, intermediate uh, term. Um, I'm going to add the one second as intermediate term roadmaps. Oops, do we get stuck? Okay, um, it's um, it's it worked very well for me. And when you look back and you study these things, you can clearly see that the market was never was never in a macro it corrective phase for sure, but not in a macro trend change. Just by looking at the direction of the 50 and the 34. Let me add the, I know people use the 100. I, I mean, I, I use, people use uh, the 200 for looking at the, where's my 200? Okay, there you go. And before I go any further, let me ask you a question. What platform do you use, Bob? What trading platform do uh, you use? Think or, uh, think or Toss, exactly, okay, good. Uh, Craig? Uh, toss. Excellent. Um, Derek? Uh, I use uh, TD. I don't know if that uh, makes yes. sense. Okay, so if you use TD, then you should use Toss. Okay, think or swim. Uh, okay, yeah. you, you use, okay, the, uh, get used to it. It's one of the yeah. best charting programs ever and overall market thing, but I'll explain something else to you guys. Jason? Yeah. Toss. Okay, so what I have found, my experience, that when you look at charts, on different platforms, they send you a different message. I don't want to, you know, it, it's hard to explain. I use three different platforms: simple visual one, something like this, which is which is actually Warden. Okay, um, freestockcharts.com, use it for free. Warden has the real-time version. I don't need it, so I just use this one. You know, it's looking at as one of my one of my platforms to look at more the overall trend type of thing. Toss is used for all kinds. I mean, it's so. I mean, uh, the the person who specializes literally in Thinkorswim has written scripts for it and everything is my tech admin, uh, Siam Shogun. Any any time you'd like to use one of these lessons, uh, which you certainly should, for him to help you set up different, you know. The different ways. I mean, he's he's out there uh, with uh, with the way he sets things up. I like I'm, I'm more simple um, and like to keep it you know as 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 clean as possible. But it's great. I started using TradingView recently. I find it to be fantastic, especially for the to to monitor volatility intraday, which Toss does a very fantastic job. But um, but uh, uh, the TradingView.com, which is right here, I'm trying out their pro version and I'm learning how to use it. it. This is also a very comprehensive program, even though it's web-based. So this is uh, this is something I want to encourage people to also use. You can just use the free version, all right, tradingview.com. The other one that I use, which is far more technical and really requires a, you know, requires a keen eye over time to understand and has done extremely well for me, where when it comes to calling some powerful market shots on in the form of algorithmic trading is bar charts. I don't know if any of you ever use bar charts. Have you? No. Okay. No. Uh, I use a proprietary platform for my code screen and stuff. Uh, aside from Toss, is a, a company uh, from here in New Jersey, New York area called Quad Q U O D D. If anyone's interested, they can try them out. Um, they're about a hundred bucks a month. Um, the format and stuff is fantastic. They're a Java-based platform, um, and they, the, uh, the the charting system comes with that, bar charts. Bar charts also can be subscribed individually. And then, by the way, I, uh, just full disclosure, I have no connection with these companies. Um, bar charts, also can, uh, they're based out of Chicago, and um, so that's there. Now, the ones that I show in the form of, um, of the pivot charts and all that is uh, I'm pulling it up on the other side on my Twitter feed so that people... Ah, this is this is a lovely uh, Kandinsky painting there. Okay, right there. But this chart has made me. Oops. This chart has done very well for me. All right. I mean, not just this chart. This. So, if 
you look at it, and of course, you know, you can uh, enlarge it on your screens and stuff, but um, this is this is what a bar chart looks like. And for this, I use, I just simply add the pivots. Um, I, I add, you know, I, uh, depending on the retracement stuff, I look at, I look at the Fibonacci, which I use a lot, as you know, the fibs, especially on retracement bounces or retracements period. Um, and, and I, and it populates it and the Bollinger's, the Bollinger's. And, uh, this is extremely, extremely accurate. Now one has to get their eyes trained to reading it, but I like to I keep it simple. And I, you know, I show this repeatedly. So get used to looking at this. Um, if you want to actually put it as one of your, uh, use it as one of your trading tools, then uh, subscribe to Quad. Let me know because I've meant I've referred a couple of people to them, and uh, generally it costs about two to three hundred dollars a month. But they have given an introductory offer for a hundred, whatever. Somebody wants to try it out, so let me know on that. Um, other, otherwise, you can do it through bar charts. It's real time. It's the whole works. So this technical chart alone, where it's not this just a chart, but these are all my lines that I have drawn, is really makes this worthwhile. So when I was looking at things and trying to measure the volatility on Friday, give you an example, this is a Friday chart, you can clearly see here that I drew a trend line here from the lows of July 7. Yep, July 7. And I've, I've been, I show this repeatedly so people can see how the story is developing. So this is very, you know, it's, it, 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 I, this is a downtrend lines. You got the red lines, downtrends. You got these, you know, the uptrend lines, which which uh, which uh, um, are there drawn. I can put in uh, the uh, the numerical uh, values. I don't like doing that because then it gets too busy. Then I draw these. Uh, I call this the volatility cluster in one of my older charts. Same one, but I'd written the volatility cluster. Broke that. Came down. Tested this. Couldn't hold it. Fell. Closed this gap, and then it filled all gaps. I put the same chart last week, calling you know with a big caption saying you know all gaps filled. Now, what's amazing about this type of charting on the bar charts at least is that it is so accurate to the penny, give or take. And these candles turning, this candle turning alone for active traders is worth some real decent money. And then and and this is of course the hourly chart. So you can do it on a five minute basis, whatever the case, but this is extremely accurate. Now the lines that I draw too, it amazes me sometimes that how they go exactly there, whether it be the, you know, whether it be a support level, whether it be breaking down, it's just, to me, I just find it fascinating and it puts money in my pocket. So I like to, I, I put it out there. So the more you get used to looking at this chart, or, or when I post the pivot once and I call them the pivot charts, you know, even though that's not the correct term, but still, you you start to read what 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 is supposed to be read, which is the green lines. These green lines being the resistances, the red lines being the supports, and then of course the advanced chart reading. As you get closer into it, you can see when they're turning down, when they're turning up, and they are generally very accurate. And on these high momentum plays that I play sometimes, I use this very well, the Netflixes of the world and things like that, because prior to those big candles forming, you start to see these resistance lines for whatever reason, because they are algo driven, these charts, they start to move up. So regardless of the volatility, it's telling you there's a lot of flow into that stock that it's going to go there. And then, you know, I, I mean, I don't just rely on one thing, but I'll go in then and put in, put in a powerful trade alert to go ahead and do that. And nine out of 10 times, they hit each of these resistance lines or the, the support lines. And in between, I have my own lines drawn, and that's my job, try to be as accurate as possible than what we do. I use a simple stochastic at the bottom to determine level of uh, level of oversold condition, which simply means the level of uh, the pressure, you know, of the selling and the, you know, what the, what the, what the sentiment is and, you know, what the, what the selling pressure is and what's happening. And those are pretty good indicators too. So looking at this spy, uh, which was drawn at, um, which was drawn at, uh, what time? At 140. And the market basically went down a little bit more, but then um, I, I don't think, let me see. Yep. And if I could show you, which I can't move from my other screen right now, this this baby, um, by the end of the day, let me get my drawing tool. By the end of the day, 
was up to, I actually moved this line a little bit as things move. Um, so the end of the day, it was almost here, right there. But what I had done is I had gone ahead and moved this downtrend line, this, this red one, I'd gone ahead and fine tuned it to touch the intraday high. And uh, that was opening high on the market, obviously. Uh, and, uh, and, and we're basically, you know, up here, we're broken through that. So anyway, I mean, all I'm trying to explain is that uh, these, these minute type of chart readings, I use different platforms and each one of them, believe it or not, is, uh, uh, is giving me a different look at the thing. And I try to mix it up and throw it in there. That's, that's one way. Now, um, I put more lines in there, the 200 day moving average, you know, the standard media and the average technician, oh, okay, we bounced off the 200 day moving average, which also happens to be the uptrend line right here. This one, that's where we bounced off. You can see that, Derek, you can see it? Yep. Yep, right there. So I'm gonna actually leave the 200 day in there because now it's in focus, remember. Technical analysis is like a fad, right? So the media will pick up on one or two things like, oh my God, we are back below the 200, blah, blah, blah. Same old talk comes out. So depending on that, I will add certain lines to my charts so that you guys can follow uh, what's going on. Because believe it or not, the power of the media in determining which way the markets will head here and there over the short term is pretty high. It could be used as a very contrarian indicator, and sometimes it's just a herd mentality that manifests itself in a big sell-off or a big rise in the market. So, um, so anyway, so the, the, here's the hundred day, which mix, is mixing in with the is merging with the with the uh, uh, fifty day, and the thirty four day is also merged in. So we have a confluence, a confluence of, uh, I used to use the word a lot when I supposed a lot on stock tweets, uh, of, uh, of indicators right here. Now, so monitor those lines and let me, let me uh, now go over how, um, how I read my thing. So you have the Bollinger's, the acceleration bands, trading bands that I draw, support levels, the arrows being the inflection points, both on the upside and the downside. Um, these being hey, the intermediate zone. Yes, go ahead. Quick question. That yeah, confluence of the 34, 50, and 100, is that uh, giving a possible signal of a powerful move next? Okay. The, the, you, if, you go, uh, you, if you go back in the past. I have, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have to stop you now. And the reason I have to stop you because you just preempted what I'm going to go into. That's very smart, okay? You're absolutely correct. So I'm going to go into that next as to how I read these things, okay? Now that I've explained the basic format. And Derek, I know that uh, you were having some trouble in reading the basic format. I want you to ask me a question or two so I can be um, as effective as I can right now. So um, so you understand what I'm talking about? The red lines, obviously, the very danger zones, major inflection points, uh, lows in the market, I should say. Green line, obviously, you know, the, the upper bands. These, this line, for example, I would either draw it in red or I would draw it in, in if you see this color, uh, which is in orange, I guess, which is the intermediate zone, okay, which was intermediate support and uh, 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 resistance. So that's what it is. It's sort of the middle ground, okay. Um, so Derek, um, uh, any any quick questions? No, I think it's it's definitely making sense here as as, a, as you as, plot as it I out. go along. Okay, so I'm going to and and who was that who talked about the confluence? Bob, was that you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're, I'll, we're, I'll, I'll I'll get into that in a second because that is that is very you know relevant to what we're talking about and that's what I was going to. Was that's why it's up to you. That's very smart. Um. So anyway, the simplest way of looking at the internals is the stochastics. That's sort of the simplest way of looking at it. Okay, stochastic is oversold. We're going to bounce this and that. It doesn't always work like that, right? Because they warp, the, especially when we are in an event-driven market that we're going through right now, where the volatility algos are just manipulating and slicing and dicing each other, not just traders and humans. They're machines against machines. I've always said that as time goes, lesser and lesser human participation, more and more machine participation. So they're fighting each other on, okay, you know, there's the cluster, we're gonna go hit that stops, we're gonna hit those, you know, all kinds of stuff. So bottom line is, you start to see all kinds of warp behavior happening. Now this being a daily, it's easier to see, but when you look at an hourly or a 30 minute, you know, it's a heck of a lot more uh, crazier. I'll show you, I, I, in the previous session, I showed a very simple version of the Dow Jones from last week, from Monday to thing, and it, people 
realize like, oh my God, yeah, it is volatile, but there is, you, you, you know, even then through all that, we're still making money. So there is a way to, of, of handling it. Um, so anyway, so the internals, the stochastics, are the, the easiest way you get very deep oversold, you are going to get an oversold bounce. It's really as simple as that. Now, whether it's going to be a V-shaped bounce like we see here, those are the hard ones to read. Because, but the bottom line is that you could have a double bottom. Once you see double bottom on a stochastics, buy. That's a, that's a, that's a confirmation. Okay. Now, the buying doesn't mean that it's just going to simply go up and test the highs. It simply means that over the next 24 to 48 hours, you're going to make a lot of money if you're in that trade. And 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 you in 24 to 48 hours, and all this I laid out, uh, you are going to hit some of these lines that I've drawn, some of these, you know, the, whether it be the moving average of this and that, which I'm going to cover in a second, and then you're going to get overbought. And once you get into this overbought territory, that is almost a 80% probability you're going to start to see a pullback. Now, whether the pullback comes in hard and comes and 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 tests the lower band RSI below 20, as we know. That is not that's not a given. Right now we're in no man's land because we could very well turn up like this or we could come down and and test uh, below the 20. So anytime you see large oversold V-shaped bounces, at least make money over the next 24 to 48 hours. I would say 24 hours. Because nowadays the machines are so strong and the volatility ranges are 100 to 200 points are roughly about 20 S&P points or if not 30. You are going. To, you're immediately going to get overbought and oversold. You don't even have to wait. Sometimes it happens within three hours. We know that. Last Wednesday alone, you know, we moved around 186 points, and every day that same things type of happening. So the reality is that these are obviously huge buy points, whichever way you slice it or dice it. Now, volatility right there. So when people say, "Oh, you know, uh, this is, you know, I, I want to be in that swing trade," well, if you're going to be in that swing trade, I can't really tell you from a tra tactical standpoint what's going to happen in 72 hours because we just came across the Greek thing, which is going to raise his heads, by the way, on August 20th when they actually are, uh, uh, when the, the that deal, uh, when they actually get the infusion of the money. Okay. So volatility is, it's just, uh, it's that's why I call them volatility clusters. So we have entered a volatility cluster zone here within a large trading band. And that trading band is uh, 2040 to 2140. Quick thing you should know. Markets love trading in 100-point bands on the S&P, and markets love trading over a multi-week, multi-month basis. They like to trade within 100-point bands or 1,000-point bands on the Dow Jones. Psychological, that's what they do. So Dow 17 to 18,000 or Dow 17, 5 to 18. That's what we're doing right now, 500 point bands. And then the macro cycle corrects itself down to that 17,000, which we're going to go to, which we don't, who knows, we might get there by Monday. We're only, we're almost there. In fact, I wanted to go there by Monday, but what I want is not what it's going to do. So the point is, I think it might happen this week or before the middle of the month. That's not a day story. I'll explain to you in a few sessions on, on, um, uh, intra week and seasonal factors that cause a lot of uh, uh, not disruptions but cause a lot of volatility. So anyway, um, so going back to it, this which I consider to be a you know, one of the best buying opportunities ever. So if you look at the stochastics and let's say I don't, you don't want to look at other internals and stuff. If you look at the stochastics, then as long as the stows are guiding you up, okay, uh, as long as the stows are guiding you up. Um, you will get you will get intraday chop, but unless you see a, uh, of course it's a daily chart, but unless you start to see a over overbought condition resolving itself, you can stay long, and that's what managing a good swing trade is all about. I have uh, not been thrown off the boat because I have followed the stows, and of course I look at quite a few other indicators, but showing you the simple ones, just because the the, the stows uh, are, are 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 pointing that they want to go higher regardless of the intraday or uh, interday, uh, intraday uh, uh, chop. So very, very important that if you want to stay in a trade, like for example, this, this wasn't just a one-way trip up. This was lots of chop. But if you followed this, and if you followed this, you would have remained in the trade. Now in between, they're going to do these type of candles, which is going to, and that's what I say, uh, is, is, is they're going to do this type of candle, 
which is going to completely throw somebody off 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 the boat, uh, something like this, for example. Um, but then, you know, this is the tricky part. Is it going to go here or is it going to stay here and turn? We're in the same position right now with the markets. So stochastics, major inflection points, deep oversold, got to buy, cost average down, and then sell at those kaboom days, two, 300 point days. Like I say, shooting fish in a barrel. I don't buy are the, are the, I, uh, I, is this, Go ahead. Yeah, is this is stochastics chart here. Is that, is that the daily you're showing or is that like a, how, I, how I'm far out is it? I, I'm showing you daily. I'm showing you daily. I'm showing you the daily. Okay. So it's not even the, the shorter version ones, which are a heck of a lot harder to read. But anyway, because they're constantly getting overbought and oversold. So if you want to get a be better perspective what the markets are, we're in middle. We, we're in little no man's land right now. Within a within uh, a hair's length of having a pretty massive move up, and then giving back in. Massive move up doesn't mean we're going to make okay. a new high, and that I'm going to get into in a second. And following through with what Bob had asked before. So so that's one way to read it. Okay. So um and of course I try to guide people as much as possible on that side, but I use stochastics all the time. The vortex indicator is also a good trend indicator. And uh, we'll give you a nice, uh, you know, a nice uh, idea about whether or not the market is ready to make a trend change or whether or not it's going to, you know, and the trend change is, like I said, last very short. So I'm not talking about weeks and weeks of trend change. Those days are gone. Those days are gone, in my opinion. So here, the vortex, uh, the, 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 the negative vortex indicator is moving up rather sharply. So on, at least on the daily, it's telling you the sell-off is not over. And I said that on Friday, too. Because once it gets up and starts to do a, you know, and this could happen very quickly, uh, once you get up to these levels here and you start to see the turn down, is your first sign that the market is about to embark on a 100 to 200, if not a 300 point rally. But the deeper the green vortex, which would be the, 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 the positive vortex, uh, goes down, the better off the oversold conditions and the higher the red line. You understand that, Derek? Yeah. It's very easy. It's visual. Just go be be a visual trader for first because it's it doesn't take too many brain cells out and believe me it works. You know. So basically, have, I looked I looked at this vortex indicator chart. That you're yes, thinking the way the way I read this is the market should start to move back up again. Yes, and it is not there yet. Almost there. Almost there. Yeah. Right. Almost there. Remember when we when we had that fake. Uh, candle on the 8th of, uh, of thing. This was the ultimate volatility uh, uh, thing, which was the first week of July. And yeah. I mentioned that first week of July, remember? This was the this was the Greek uh, saga, like unfolding minute by minute in front of us, right there. See this? But yeah. guess what it did? It resolved massively to the upside. Now, if you were following the, yeah. if you're following the stochastics, you would have seen we got deep oversold and we created double bottom. Wow. And a double bottom creation is a very powerful signal to go out there, stick with the long trade, and hit it. Now, when you get candles like this, okay, this was like this was a massive coil spring because there was a lot of money on the sidelines which wanted to enter the market right away and make a excuse my friend shitload of money over a short period yeah. of time. So guess what? They did it in one week. I really didn't expect the market mm -hmm. to go all the way up and test 2130, but gotta respect what I saw. Yeah. It blew through. Once you see two large once you see two large uh, uh, candles, what, they, what they're known as marching soldiers, okay, like this, call it whatever yeah. you want. Technicians, you know, far better technicians than me who know the right terms. But you see this massive, that's massive short covering. Now, in between, look what they did. They dropped it 265 points that day. Wow. Okay? For no reason. There was like a blowout. Now, keep in mind, when you see these type of massive candles, red ones, that's not you and me. Those are large, multi, hundreds of million dollar uh, institutional margin calls being settled. Hmm. You guys are in the business. You've got margin calls for clients. You know it. I still remember. I, I, I ran a very high retail book as well as uh, uh, dealt with uh, small uh, 401ks and medium-sized 401k institutional funds. Okay? And we had some hedge funds trading through us. I'll tell you. When they croak, they croak big. <laughs> okay, believe me, because you know, an average tra average investor might get a margin call for ten thousand bucks because they bought something yeah. on margin. Everyone, you know, whatever. And and these institutions, one of the, let me inject this right now. One of the primary factors, not the only, but one of the primary factors of this huge volatility cycles we are seeing currently, the macro factor is oil and commodities. Yes. 
Everyone understands that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Andy Hall, who is Phil Bros, was, uh, was one of the, he's known as the god of oil trading. I tweeted that article. All right. His fund blew up. Well, a good portion of it because he called oil wrong. Commodities, same story, gold. David Einhorn, okay, his flagship fund, his gold and commodity section blew up. Oh, yeah. It's down 6% for the month. You know what that means? That means he's going to sell his apples, his price lines, his Netflix. He's going to sell whatever automated selling. He, he, he probably doesn't even know. He's got, his boys are doing it, okay, because they got to come up with the money to cover that bad bet that he made on gold and oil. So uh, a significant amount of the intraday volatility, and that's where my term comes in, institutional force selling, is coming directly from there. So every time the market is raising its head and you're seeing a 50-point run for 10 minutes, they're slapping it because they need to settle those calls. Friday was no example. For all I know, for all I know, Large margin desk, institutional margin desk. One of my good friends was my neighbor, still keep in touch with him, he's retired. He used to run the margin desk. He was institutional director for UBS Payne Weber. He used to tell me stories over drinks and Fridays during the crazy times, how he used to sell out 20, 30, 40, $100 million worth of stock because these institutional brokers wouldn't come up with the money. <laughs> okay, I'm serious. So when I talk about these things like 3.30, here comes the sell-off. I'm telling you, they wait around certain times. Bob probably knows, okay? They, they wait around till they, they first do their selling the first part of the morning on the first initial move up because they're looking to get as much value out of the porf, of, uh, uh, positions within the portfolio they're going to sell. In my firms, um, in the smaller one that I work for, they used to do it latest by 2.30. I was a pretty, you know, high-ranking uh that I was, I, mean, I was in the top five or whatever the case may be. So he would give me extra time because I'd be like, come on, the guy's wiring in that money. That 50 G is coming in. Come on, you know, you got to hold his position. He's a good client. He's good for the, uh, for, the, for the firm. Doesn't matter. At one point, they have to do what they have to do because the clearinghouse is not going to hold a large margin position over the weekend. So once that gets flushed out, you get an immediate little bounce. That's what we got on Friday because all of a sudden, you have a mini short covering, this and that. Does that change anything about Monday? Nothing. Nothing. We could get a slap down on Monday uh, and, and people think, oh, you know, <clears throat> that's because of the China news, which was, by the way, terrible. That came out. I posted, I tweeted that. It's a very important look at my tweets. The China trade numbers came out. Horrible. Who cares? Horrific China numbers have re led to massive rallies in the Shanghai markets because they do what they do. <laughs> You know, they'll just they'll say, OK, that's it. We're lowering interest rates by another quarter percentage points. We're we, we're giving full carte blanche for 90 year old grandmas to invest in the market. And I'm just half kidding, but it's true. OK, so yes, sure. and the next thing, you know, bang, market goes up to 100 points, whichever the case. Let's look at the technicals. So at this point, Derek, looking at the yeah. PI and I know you'll be looking at this like closely on Monday, you're going to see oh. that unless we peak at these levels, it's not a quote unquote definitive buy. Now, we could very well turn from here too, right? This was the previous high. Just on, yeah. on uh, look at the date on the left on the 9th. So watch that. You know, it's a, it's a good visual indicator and it's a good tactical indicator too. Other things you might want to look at, which I put there, is the MACD, which I do, what I do um, is... This is this is a this is a bunch of different things working at the same time, right? So this one gives me a lot of messages immediately. So look what's going on here. You see this blue line here on balance volume? Yeah. You know, the technical definition of on balance volume, look it up on Investopedia, but it basically means net volume, buying minus selling. It's diving down. It's diving. Mm -hmm. That means that they are for selling and not just for selling. I mean, look what happened to the market over the last two days. They took the sacred cows and slaughtered them. Disney, Viacom, these are the value manager's dream stocks. This is the core holdings of a significant amount of the $800 trillion or whatever the number is, I don't even know, of the mutual fund complex. They slaughtered the media companies. So what do you think is going to happen? Of course, you got oil being slaughtered, okay, and you got Viacom and Disney and Mickey getting slaughtered. I was joking around, right, that Mickey left uh, uh, Mini for Max. So then I'm being politically incorrect here, so I'm just kidding. And and so anyway, so when you look at this on balance volume, the last time we got a massive <clears throat> tick like this, where we came down to 
look on the right hand side. I don't really look at the numerical numbers. I look at a individual part, 19 and a half million. Okay, right there. They're horrific numbers because what happened last time that it came down to these levels here. The market embarked, the market basically, this, okay, it came down here. Here's the interesting part. And then on balance volume started to rise a little bit. Look, let me get my drawing pen. It's see the positive divergence. Look at this. This started happening, but look what was going on. And this is one thing. So the market, this was the day it hit the lowest, but then the market went up. You got the bounce, short covering bounce, then the volatility cluster and the on balance volume started to trend up. So that was a positive divergence that this cluster among other things, the stochastics I showed you earlier, was not ready to break the 2040 lows. So that was your early warning uh, signal to keep on buying through these things. Now that in hindsight, we look at it like, man, and how many times my members and traders, and some of the uh, you know the ones that didn't act say, Frank, you know, I mean, I just can't keep on doing this in the sense that I can't missing. I said, just take a small position, test it out. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So here we have a positive divergence. This was completely messed up, the, the, the selling pressure. That's what histograms are. Histograms are selling pressure, all right? What is the selling pressure in the market? So that was, so this one is getting to a level here where we are going to go into a severe powerful rally, but it needs to get a little bit more uglier. And we saw that, you know, I mean, on, on the side. So what does little uglier mean? We could fall to 2040. Very possible. And look what's going on with, um, oh, here's the other thing I do when I show the MACD. I draw a Bollinger Band over it. So somebody asked me, why the hell the heck do you draw a Bollinger Band over your MACDs? Because it gives me a visual representation. And this is where my unorthodox technical charting comes in. And it works. Is when I get, when I'm getting closer to the lower Bollinger, that means the selling pressure is reaching its extreme. Okay, so it's just a visual way I'm looking at things here because nothing here is positive, telling you the truth. Forget the candle here. So you, you still got a little bit more to go. We're getting there. We got these histograms, which most probably will come down a little deeper. And then you're going to see a powerful move, which if you don't act on it, you will miss it, period. And it's happened over and over again because these are seriously deep oversold conditions. If you want to match it to the if and, and, and match it to the vortex you can see that vortex normally doesn't go up all the way here well kind of so i'm not going to rely on that too much but it's giving you a sell signal here <clears throat> this is actually a positive divergence because we are down here right we're down here at 2067 the last time we were down here which was this 27th of july right 27th of july we can we we were basically a little bit deeper i mean this is really fine chart readings i don't want you to rely on too much but the 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 pattern of the stochastics were a little bit different we were diving down so here we are you know you somebody can make a case that this is a uh, 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 this is a, you know somewhat of a positive divergence but um anyway so let me go through that macd chart again for a quick second because i got to show you guys one other thing Number one, you get overbought like this, forget it. You want to just buy your, you know, VIX calls were very annoying, but you can buy your SPY puts, your whatever the indices we're looking at, you can basically swing trade a nice pullback. No question, because that's deep overbought conditions. All right. And uh, um, then then the MACD histogram, it just covered that. MACD, actual MACD diving. So how much lower can it get? Well, you know, it can go down here, right? It can go down here. It doesn't seem to be following this all the way down like it did here, which was a monumental buying opportunity, you know, the Greek the Greek uh, uh, volatility. So whichever the case, you guys, you, you get the picture. But let me jump up to the front of the charts right now to read this. This is what my read is, okay? We have, this is a daily. So memorize that picture and it's also on the chart so you know uh, so here's the daily so at this point we have a couple of things going on if you look at the broader picture these rolling hills you can call it a head and shoulder you can call it multiple head and shoulders you can call it a 
a, 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 a bullish, believe it or not, we're still in a bullish uh, ascending triangle. Okay, extend this, extend this out here. This is still a bullish ascending triangle. And what do ascending triangles do? I've shown ascending triangles for like six months ago and it broke out. So my previous ascending triangle was here. You can pull up my charts and, you know, and then we, uh, when we broke out. So here, forget this line. Let's draw this properly for you guys. So this is an ascending triangle right there. We haven't broken that yet. And even if we break it, if we enter back this trend line, which is so critical, this one, okay, the one that bounced off on Friday. If we bounce in, we're going to make a big move. And remember one thing, and guys, you've been in the market long enough to know this, right? Some of the guys have been 10, 15 years. The biggest rallies happen within the context of a bear market before they give in. And I have a simple explanation for that. Nowadays, it's algo. In the old days, they called it smart money. Okay, whatever. The big money likes to fluff it up and dump it at the top, period. So let's be behind. Let's not be behind the curve on that one. You know, let's not believe just because we have a big rally, we're going to basically open up and open. You know, get up to um uh to to 2160 and and 18. I mean, sorry, 19,000 on the Dow. Might happen. We don't know. Whatever the case, uh, at this point we are touching. So we have that ascending triangle still in play. We have. Uh, let me get this. Okay. Now we have one second. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay, now let's do the micro analysis, right? So you have a confluence of these lines here, as Bob pointed out earlier, and I was gonna go into it, where if you look at the trajectory of these lines overall, they're still moving sideways. You see a nosedive like this, forget it. We're entering a three month bear market. And believe me, the next bear market too will last very short, thanks to the machines. It's going to be fast, furious, ugly, bang. They're going to move it up, just the way it happened here. So, which I expect, by the way, when the market to get down to uh, to the uh, 16,005, you know, I think this correlates to, we'll look at it on the Dow charts. I believe that correlates to about 16,5 or so in the market. Um, anyway. Let's stick to this. So these lines are moving sideways. So that's your first indication that they are not ready to fully break it, break the market yet. Same time, this being a daily, you have the confluence of the of the of the directional uh, thing uh, move on the uh, directional bias on the 100-day moving average still moving up. You are starting to see a small tiltage, for a better choice of words, on the 50 and the 34. But overall, first glance, always go with first glances. This doesn't look like a, uh, this doesn't look like a, it's a, it's, a, it's a macro breakdown, number one. Number two, use the five day moving average for a simple reason. There are five days in the week to trade. So I use the five day moving average. I used to use the nine, didn't find it that useful. The five day is diving down. So that's gonna act as resistance. So immediate resistance on the, on the, on the market is gonna be around 2090, roughly about 13 points from here. That translates into about 100 Dow points, if not a little bit more. Okay, so we got 100 Dow points under the belt here, just on this reversal hammer, reversal candle, right? So you're bouncing off the Bollinger. You're not at the acceleration band yet. Now, I, the reason I put the acceleration band, just so you understand the methodology behind it, what does the word acceleration really mean? When things get really accelerated, upside or downside. We very seldom hit the upper end of the acceleration band. And when we do hit the upper end of the acceleration band, please short the market at will, because that means things are getting a little bit out of hand. People are a little bit too giddy. You start to see sentiment indicators showing you know, all kinds of bullishness, overall bullishness. So, and that happened back here. We were climbing up the acceleration band. We were climbing up the acceleration band and bang came the market. So overall, not just just things to things to look at that and on the downside the same thing if you hit the lower end of the acceleration band right lower end of the acceleration band uh, that means things are getting really hairy time to buy hard now can somebody look at this visual thing that i'm showing here and tell me let me not move around too much okay so let me take this uh let me make this a little bit clean 
Okay, look at the look at the acceleration band, Bollinger band, acceleration band, Bollinger band. You notice something happening here? Squeeze. Mm -mm. We did squeeze is a squeeze, and in, in the daily there's no squeeze here. Look at the pat, look at the pattern, and then I'll draw it for you guys. Look at the pattern of the Bollinger band and acceleration band, Bollinger band and acceleration band. What do you see? I always do comparables. This is where pattern symmetry comes in. And while you guys are thinking, I'll answer Bob. Bob, yes. The the correct thing is that standard mean reversion you you gravitate uh you know the standard deviation is probably one from the moving averages so you gravitate the first magnet is your 34 50 and of course in this case the 100 day moving average correct so that's going to be a magnet and overshoot would be testing the downtrend line maybe a failure maybe a breakout we don't know but focus on these acceleration and the bollinger bands what's going on Can anyone see see the pattern? Well, when, what was when the pattern? What was the move, pattern here? When there's a violent move up or down, the acceleration bands expand far more in that direction than the okay. Bollinger's do. So let me ask you a question here. That that's a good answer, but that's not the answer. Uh, when we had a violent move here, this was violence, right? Okay. Correct. Yes. So this was violence. The acceleration band just collapsed. So what I'm getting at here, to make a use of time here, is that acceleration band is fall is is basically creating a rounded cup. You notice? Mm. There. So what it's telling you that let me show this to you guys again. What it's telling you that despite this big thump, the acceleration band is not coming down anymore. That means the trading band, correctly pointed out, not a squeeze, but is narrowing. So there's your trading band for you. That is what the market is going to trade. We're going to hit the highs again. So what it's telling you is that despite this massive volatility selling, the acceleration band is actually, I mean, the, 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 the trade, trading bands are actually rising. That means just simple, visual. You're creating a support. Despite this intense volatility in the market, we should be, if to be honest with you, this market would be in deep crap and my reading would be totally different and I would have no hope for a real move up if the acceleration bands had collapsed like this. You get it? Okay, so because they're compressing, it's showing that, that our range is tightening. That's right. The range is tightening. Which, and which, which should mean it should resolve. To the upside. It should resolve above the red line. It should th 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 basically you have what I showed you guys on uh, on uh, the thing. One second here. Does anyone have that window open on Suri Notes? I'll show it to you. I'll show you exactly what the what the pattern is that's shaping up. If we could all see patterns before, as they were happening, then we would be wizards. But uh, we should at least try to. So this is this is basically. Where is the, one second, let me get that. I keep on getting this disappear. What it's creating is this, hold on. Can you, can everyone pull up the, uh, uh, the, the page, surinotes.com? And I want you everyone to please uh, bookmark it. Ready? Let me know when you guys pull it up. I'm there. Okay. Can yeah. somebody tell me what pattern is developing in this zone? Talking about the markets or talking about the bands? Okay. I'm going to do it like this. Hold on. No, I'm talking about the market. And let me make this bigger. What happened? so people can see it. I'm going to take these lines out so it'll be clearer. Hold on.
Okay. I'm look through it while I'm squeezing out the pattern. Uh, the triangle to me. Triangle. The triangle is no, it's not a triangle. This is a market structure pattern. I'm giving you. I'm giving you is, kind is, of a hint. Is it a, is it a, is it a Gartley bearish that's going to resolve higher? Nope. Mm -hmm. You're too far advanced for me. I, I don't even you know. Dragon bullish. That's right. It is. It's a okay. mark. It's. It's. It's not really. Dra it's dragon bullish, but it's. But it's also a market structure pattern. This is the reason why I say it takes time, and you guys will get it. I'm not saying that's a pattern because we don't know unless a pattern really develops what's going to happen. I'm simply saying that what we are seeing in front of us is most probably a market structure pattern like this. Okay, where it's like this. Yep, that looks exactly like it actually. But in a more complex form. You follow what I'm saying? So the way yeah, I did, a little bit messier. Yeah, it's messier. Exactly. Because if everything was so symmetrical, I mean, great, you know. So bottom line is it's a messier pattern. And the fact that the Bollingers are you acting as an envelope, right? And acting as an envelope in 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 sque in, in giving you an idea of the trading ban. The Bollingers are acting envelope. This is turning out to be like one of those dragon bullish type of patterns, which has manifested several times, several times in this volatility cycle. Okay, so we could even come down here, do this, and move from here. But whichever the case, unless we completely break down here, the pattern is going to be resolved first. We know the levels. Test the downtrend line here. Then the next will be the 50 and the 34 right here. And then, of course, this. And, of course, while it's doing it, it's not going to do it in a straight line. But who knows? It did it in a straight line right here. So what I'm getting at, these market structure patterns are so difficult to uh, ascertain and visualize while they're happening. But by reading the internals, by reading the deep oversold conditions, the massive liquidation of large cap stocks, that is telling you that a powerful bounce is in the making. And the powerful bounce might be might be uh, um, might be 200 points, or it might be this. And I'll be constantly showing that along the way. And so now, next time you when you look at the charts, you'll be like, okay, that's that makes some sense because you talked about it. Okay, but but keep on. And these arrows that I draw are important because they're not like arrows. I'm praying that it holds there. It simply means that I, that's what I'm looking at from a standpoint of inflection point. Also, the traditional um, uh, technicals, uh, technicians will tell you we're bouncing off the 200-day. Uh, we have held it for so long. But hey, it might get a little bit messy during the day. I wouldn't be surprised if we come to the lower acceleration band at 2060, which I was thinking it was going to come to, but it all didn't get there. And that's why my pivot charts and everything that I showed you are so important for me to determine. This is more of a larger picture on what's going on with the market. And the same thing, uh, um, like if I if now if I squeeze it to the the now if I squeeze it to into the 60 minute band, you can clearly see here that on the 60 minute band, come on, we we enter the triangle. This is the triangle. You know what I'm saying? And what is the upper end of the triangle would be you know you you guys can do it. It's right there. On the, on the hourly chart, uh, it doesn't look like things are, you know, these lines are, you know, the, the first line of uh, attack uh, uh, will be the 34 day, um, 100 day, 54 day. So we got about 20 to 30 S&P points that we can cover. Somebody can be extremely bullish and um, they can say, hey, this is what it's doing. You know, this is what it's doing. And it very well might be doing that. I say, let's see, we might slip and do this zigzag throw everyone off the boat and then take off that's that was the pattern here right so why can't the pattern be repeated pattern if you look at yeah go if ahead. you look at the mac if i look at the macd as well down below yes it does look like they're starting to perk up there you go good good eye for that i i just noticed it myself okay uh and uh, guess what the stochastics are starting to perk up see this so short term we're, we're in for a bounce exactly 
and that bounce would most probably be capped on a tactical basis at 2104. So do the math, 30 points from here, yeah. roughly, roughly 30 points, do the math in Dow terms, what is it? One S&P points is roughly eight Dow points. We got another 240 points on the Dow yeah. to be had. Exactly. Uh, how, is that, how is that stochastic set up? Is that a fast or slow? Oh, uh, the, I, I very, use what I, are the variables in there? I use the fast. I simply use the fast. Um, um, uh, the, I, I I generally use the fast, but um, I can uh, let me see here. What's the K period and the D period in that? Yeah, the K period in this is the standard. I'm using. I always use the standard stuff. I don't play around. The K is three, and uh, the D is five here. So. Okay. Bottom line right, is because the the, stand, the standard one on uh, TOS is uh, twelve and twelve for the K and three for the D. So yeah, so, was the, looking different. so this is twelve for the. Yes, you're right. You're right. So it's twelve for the K, three. Oh, three for the D. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I don't tampering around with too much because I I because I'm 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 more of a pattern reader. I just don't want to play around too many with the numbers because the reality is that if I'm going to get a two hundred point move, the three and the five won't really matter. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I I know I'm making you know the sort of lighthearted, but it's true. So if I want to look at a slow indicator, um, then uh, one second. Where is this? It normally should tell me still fast or slow. Interesting. <laughs> it doesn't. I'll do regular stochastics. Let's see. So the regular one is showing showing the same thing too. Um, but that's the same one as the that's the regular one. So the, the toss obviously gives you the the regular. Now, before it's what time did we start? We started like at eleven twenty. Okay, so we're going to wrap up in a couple of minutes. So let let me go through a couple of uh, uh, quick charts, actual charts posted. So uh, this part made sense, as in on reading uh, some of my basic things. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. Now let's take a look at some of the charts which will populate right now. Uh, this is this is you know also done here. I do that. Uh, I do. I, I show the the warden free stock charts. Uh, uh, more often than not, simply because it's easier for people to see when they're pulling up the screens. So here we have a big gap fill. You know, this was a tactical move that billion dollar stake in the in, in American Express posted the tweet. I got in there, um, got a nice. Uh, I, I got about 60 cents on some on some calls, which I got in a, a, at a buck 80. They were very fast moving that time, and um, and I and I have I have I have a bunch, nothing crazy, and I have some stock. So this is this is an easy one to read. The gaps. Sometimes I do it with circles like this, and a lot of the times I just do it as a as a, as a hollow rectangle. Um, downtrend lines, 5034 stochastics clean chart. One second. The toss version, telling you, you know, telling you uh, a similar story. Uh, obviously, a little bit more boxy. I use the Darvis box. I find it to be extremely useful, not necessarily in situations like this, but especially in ranges on the commodities, ranges in stocks, intraday ranges. The Darvis, obviously people who are specialists in Darvis box, I, I'm kind of self-taught. I find it to be a pretty reliable indicator of on volatility movements during the day and you know on, on and seeing ranges on that. So use the Darvis box, you know, uh, do plant it on your thing. Uh, I use the McClellan oscillator on a lot of the indices and stuff, not necessarily in stocks. And uh, I find it to be an interesting read when the McClellan oscillator gets down to minus 200 on the on the markets and uh, things like that. And those those generally connotate large buying um, thing, uh, uh, buying opportunities. I started using trading view and you guys can see they're pretty clear. Of course they chop around, but uh, pretty clear chart, you know? So let's see if that plays out or not, um, this was when it was run at 1.99. I believe it went up a little bit and ended the day exactly there. End of the day there? Yeah, I think they closed that uh, on my other screen. I'm seeing 196.99 uh, on the thing. Anyway, um, so that's another format that I use. Uh, SPY, perfectly drawn chart here. Simply join the lines. We are bouncing off the uptrend line, Davros box. This is the acceleration bands, and uh, I just put an arrow here, people to understand what's going on. Stochastic fast. If I want people to really look at it a lot, I will. I will 
enlarge the box, obviously you can clearly see here that on a daily basis, not oversold yet. Might bounce, but not deep oversold that I'd like to see. But then what I like to see doesn't always happen because everyone else wants that, you know? So um, so this is this is where we are. That's clear, Derek? When you, yeah, absolutely. When you, very good, sir. Um, Priceline drew a simple one. Somebody asked me, I wouldn't even touch Priceline right now. Made a ton of money on that stuff. I don't want to deal with it right now till it gives me some idea of a move. So here, the guy said, hey, you know, is it good buy? I said, look, put up, put up the hourly. You have a consolidation channel. And the consolidation channel Evan hasn't even fully consolidated. Yes, it might find support at the upper gap right there. That's why I drew the red line. And if it breaks that, it's going to fall here, and it might slip below the channel, scare the living daylights out of everyone, and that's the real buy point, which is around, uh, which is another 30 points from here. Will it get there? I have no idea, and might not get there because it's too powerful a stock. We are getting deeply oversold on the hourly. Let's see what happens with that. But Priceline is a chop monster, so get ready for five, six, seven dollar swings in three minutes. Um, so, but this is a pretty clean, clean picture. You got, you have uh, one second. Consolidation channel here um, doesn't get fully consolidated till it gets here, but then of course it might not just necessarily bounce directly from here. On a weaker market, it's going to fall and test the 30, test the 34. Might test the upper end of this gap, right? 1280. Now, let me ask you a question here. The stock is already down 70 points, and and it it started the journey at 1280, right? Where we were long mm -hmm. the stock. I had taken out most of my calls and stuff, but it was long the stock because we were trading the stock nicely all the way. So if it gives back that, does it change anything? Not really. It's not a good thing that if it che che checks the lower gap at 1280, that means it's done a full reversal, right? But knowing that, it might do this. So I don't know whether it's going to go to 1400 or not. I know, Bob, you've long some calls in that. On, uh, but you know what? It could very well happen. Very well happen. One sec. One second. Okay. So, um, great. So that's that's it's it's a pretty clean looking chart to be honest with you. Uh, let's take a look at the VIX. One of my favorite. And I want to get into it too much because I've spent hours on this stuff. All right. The VIX is basically at a point here where I would rather show a live chart on the VIX. But this one to read is very clear. Huge downtrend line. I played the VIX very well. Not the VIX options per se, which I don't really play much. And I'm just talking as a general proxy for the market. Major downtrend lines. Anytime you see a large reversal of like especially a spinning top naked bar where you have a long tail. It generally kind of tastes that the market's in for a nice little pullback. I'm not fully convinced yet, even though the daily is telling hourly is telling us that the market's in for a sharp move up, because this is it. This is what do you call this? A hanging man or something? I think that's one of the terms. Whichever the case, that's a large candle. If we slip up and we go above this, which we did by the way, this was posted at 10:21. After that, I did post that the VIX was going to go higher, and let me see. Let me tell you what it did. The VIX actually went higher because it, it turned tail. It turned tail and and the VIX obviously, yeah, one second. It turned tail and actually went higher. Why? Because the upper end of the Bollinger wasn't signifying a turn. So the VIX actually went to 1440 before it collapsed. Right? What was the VIX uh, somebody have? Let me see here. My other screen is a little locked. The VIX uh, basically went up, did a U-turn. That's the intraday volatility pulled back in the market and then gave in and closed the day down here. So at this point, the VIX does look like it wants to go and uh, get oversold again. So if you if you look at this VIX here, you have to look at a more real time chart. So let me bring that up. Just remember, it's very simple rule of the thumb. We enter the zone, the market's in for a nice another 200 points. We start coming down a little bit. We're good for another 100, 200 points. The VIX is a great proxy. When you're looking at this chart, Derek and everyone else, then just Follow these arrows that I show. 
okay? Uh, but realistically, any, anything over 15, no good. Anything below 15 is okay. Some people have mentioned, some of these specialists on the VIX, that, um, that the VIX is going to be stuck in a trading range of 10 to 15 for the next couple of months. Obviously, the person is bullish. I don't buy anything because, yeah, because, you know, that's a very low range to trade in. So you're telling me the markets are just going to chop around 300, 400 points uh, for the next couple of months? I don't think so. I think the markets are going to take a nice dive before they move up or they make a nice move up, test the highs and then take a nice dive. So let's take a look at the VIX. Very important chart uh, uh, from a standpoint of reading. So look what happened here. Hmm. So it did, it got up. It, this is what I showed you, though. that 1021, this is what you guys were looking at, okay? Market coming down. This was the initial rally in the morning, you know, when the market moved up. Then the VIX turns around and goes ballistic. So at this point, you don't know whether or not it's going to go this way, but obviously there was some major selling of the VIX at around 1460. Now it's creating this pattern. This is not necessarily a good pattern for a VIX, which is good for the market. This looks like it wants to get oversold. So wouldn't be surprised if the VIX comes down a bit more. Now, purposely, I left some lines out to show you guys. And that's where we're going to wrap it up. I left the 50 and the 34 on the VIX out. I read this just like a stock. One second. Here's the 34. Here's the 50. And here's the good old 5 for the five nanosecond traders. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so look where we are. People might get excited. Oh yeah, market's in for a rally. Whatever rally we get on Monday and stuff is a false one. Just letting you guys know this because they have more stuff to sell, margin calls. Mm -hmm. So VIX comes down here. It's gonna look like a complete turnaround unless it convincingly breaks this. Excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. Um, hold on. <coughs> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Couldn't hit the mute button fast enough. Um, so unless the VIX completely breaks down below the 13 level again, it's a, it's basically, you know, this is not a nice little rally. You can play that. The VIX will most probably come down to the uptrending 50 and 34 and bounce from here. So when people are in like, whoa, what's going on? Well, this is what's going on. What's going on? And the VIX is not as reliable an indicator as before for reasons you guys might know because there is so many different other instruments to use to hedge and protect your portfolios through ETFs, through complex, you know, uh, 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 other type of volatility options and stuff like that, that people don't always rely on the VIX. VIX used to be the proxy, remember, for anything to do. So the VIX is a good read, but not that great a read. So whatever the case, the way I'm looking at it, this 15 to 34 is telling us this sell-off ain't over in the market. So basically, uh, we could come down here. We could even come down here to the lower Bollinger and, and, and the acceleration band. As long as these lines are trending up, what is it telling you? That the VIX will bounce. Just the opposite of when we see in the market. So the VIX could very well test 13 and then bounce hard from here, maybe fail here, maybe get to the upper end of the Bollinger, which is 15, which is a psychological number. We break 15, see you later. We're gonna go to 16 and a half fast, complete the cycle, which would be a much better buying point for the market, in which case the market could very well be at 17,000. You get it? VIX 16 to 17 is around 17,000. Everyone follow me on that? Yep. Now, if this happens, oh boy, that means we're going to go to 16,000 real fast. That means something really blew up bad. You get it? See, I'm telling you, that's exactly the way it's going to be. Because 20 is, is these are big numbers. 20 VIX. So 17,000 here uh, on the market, this is going to be 16,000 or 16,005. All right? That's 16,005 on the market. So just remember that. So watch the VIX when I post that. I, w I post the VIX and the RVX, which is the more comp uh, Russell 2000 VIX, more so during volatile times than always because this is a good proxy. This is also telling you that it wants to move higher. However, these, this little baby might get slapped down really hard. Why, can somebody tell me? Why the, why the, uh, the RVX, the Russell volatility indicator might be moving down. In other words, the Russell might be moving up. Why do you think that might happen sh short term? What what commodity asset? Oh, I already give you the answer. What asset class do you, might have a dead cat power power bounce for a couple of days? 
Oil. Thank you. Thank you. Oil. I natural hope, natural I hope gas. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, so yeah. So if oil and commodities, which are full, uh, most of the Russell 2000, a lot of them are in there. You know, a lot of small companies. I mean, this this thing is just going to crash down to 14 again. So the Russell is actually a pretty damn good buy, in, in my estimation, given uh, a chart that I posted um, several times. You know the the TOS chart. Actually, this is a good looking chart. I like this. You know why I like it? Look at this. It's come down nicely. It's actually completed the pattern. So I'm kind of bullish on the Russell, if you ask me. Okay, I've this has completed the pattern. This is the pattern. I like pattern completions. Oops, let me get the fat pen. Pattern completions are exciting because they give you a chance to make money without having to, you know. So this is a pattern completion, right? The first pattern completion. So what what do you think is going to be the next move? Look at this. Look at look at the last pattern. What do you think is going to be the next move? This. Always remember, this is the mirror image I'm showing you, right? So here's your mirror. Your left left image, your right image. So from here, it's going to bounce up here and then fall, just the way it did here. Right? At that point, it might very well fall to 1176. So the big September sell-offs I'm talking about, we're going to close this gap down here, 1176. If not, 1128, which would be pretty horrific. But a lot of money if we if we stay disciplined on a short trade on the Russell. So I repeat again, this is a good looking chart, trend lines engaged, very nice. First pattern completed. Russell 2000, first pattern completed. Short bounce, just the way it did here. Short bounce, did it here. Get it? Mm -hmm. Jostling around. Boom, confusing everyone. Intended range, down here, down here. Volatility pattern, big. Volatility pattern, big. Run up. I don't know if we're going to get there. I mean, if this is done, buy. Both hands down. Wow. A Russell calls, forget it. Forget it. It's fine. It's uh, I use this term. People laugh. It's like you know. It's financial pornography. You know, two to forty, two to thirty, one to ten. I mean, out of control. But I catch the inflection points though. The last one I did, it went from one eighty-eight to ten. I was there from I was there from six. Cost average down three. Sold the tenant change. I mean, it's just it's just wild. What what because the Russell two thousand. First of all, is a very volatile indicator, but more importantly, it is also tied in. The VIX too, with uh, um, the Russell, uh, so the RVX is tied in with the VIX, so the and the options are tied in with the with the, with the volatility indexes. So what happens is, you get a extra leverage on that type type of stuff. So this one pattern is complete. Uh, a, a sizable bounce should uh, should bring up uh, to the uh, to testing the downtrend line at 12:44. Set so that's 35. I'm sorry, 38 points for you. 38 points is a lot of money. Rule of the thumb, 10 point jump in the Russell is almost a double on your calls. Remember, the spreads are wide and they move in 50 cent increments. So you want to test out, buy one, you'll see $50 up or down. Okay, they don't buy, uh, I normally buy in the money or a little bit out of the money. I don't go way out of the money. Sometimes if I'm really bullish at inflection points, I will go out of the money like the 1240s I did. And they worked out well, even though they did not get there they still jumped, but you have to be quick on these things. But uh, you can do the IWMs, which are slower movers, so that's fine. But this is a good looking chart. However, internals are not fully justifying a move down yet. Uh, however, we have a positive divergence. Let me show you how. Lower price, higher stochastics. See? Mm -hmm. That's a minor positive divergence. You know, this is like micro reading of the of the charts. Uh, vortex indicators extremely oversold. Whoa, mm -hmm. very oversold. Thanks to oil. Thanks to the you know the 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 battering of um, the thing of the what do you call it of the biotechs. So all that stuff. So anyway, so one o'clock. So guys, we covered. A good amount of the basics. My subsequent sessions go in deeper in other stuff. We talk about a lot of the behavioral game theory stuff, which a lot of you guys know. But I know I dive into what I what I look at. Um, do the platform setup with Siam. He's excellent. You know, if you if you need the help on doing that, options risk management and all those spreads, credits, all that, he does it very well. Um, 
I go into talking, I do a full session on futures, you know, reading the futures chart, the background, on reading the all the different futures charts to be used as a proxy uh, to your trading, your front-end trading. Um, then we talk about, uh, then I spend a whole session on macro global indicators that are tied in with the market, whether it be the US dollar, the 10-year bond, um, whether it be the euro, and what the correlation is overall, which also helps very well. And um, so it's, it's, it's very productive. Any quick questions? No. Okay, so I hope it was helpful. I'm glad that you guys all joined. Only thing I ask, it's very important, especially for beginners. If you felt the, the lesson was helpful, uh, good or bad, please leave a small testimonial uh, on the, like a feedback testimonial on the website. Very important. Everyone who's done it, most of them have put it there um, and, and feel free to write whatever you need to write. Um, keep it short so others can see it. I want to grow these group sessions because we're getting a lot of new people and uh, and so that they, they uh, so, you know, so all are engaged, all can see where I'm coming from and there's a lot more to learn in, in, and this is all happening in real time. You know what I'm saying? So do, please don't forget to leave that little feedback testimonial on the on the website and uh, and we'll go from there. Okay? Yeah. All right, guys. So everyone's good? Yeah. All right, so have a great okay. weekend, and uh, let's make uh, next week really productive. Keep trade smaller, let's move faster, but we'll be okay. So let's see if this if this thing was, you know, well, we covered a lot of the scenarios, so we'll, we'll see which one pans out. All right? Uh, all right, thank you, guys, and thank you for joining. Bye-bye.